Okay, so today, guys, we are back in one of my favorite stops. It's Bucharest. Why is it my favorite stop? Because there's a bunch of absolute whoppers from Romania here. Hopefully, we're gonna be seeing a few more of them today. If you didn't see last year's vlog, I'll leave a link up here for you. That was spectacular. I got completely obliterated by a bunch of whales. So if you haven't seen that, I thoroughly recommend checking it out. If not, I'm sure that it will happen again today. 560 pound main event. I'm not sure how many bullets I've got, but we'll work with the one for now and see if we can spin it up. The fields look pretty good. There's a lot of MVPs here today, if you don't know what that is. Basically, people that are qualified online or through a package so they should be a little bit weaker. We're starting with quite a few big blinds as well. Very, very long structure, three day event. Hopefully we can make something happen. Let's go and spin up a stack. Okay, so we are kicking things off in Bucharest with an incredible looking table here on day 1B of the 88 Live Bucharest main event. It's a 560 euro entry, but it plays like a 10 pound rebuy down the local pub. And although this is a beautiful city, the Whoppers are certainly the main attraction. On literally the very first hand, I am given the opportunity to show you exactly what I mean when a blind versus blind pot gets 3 bet jammed on ace 10 4 for 300 big blinds and the big blinds in the tank. So over set you might be thinking, no. After about 5 seconds, the big blind decides he just can't get away from top pair calls off the ace king and is off to the rail within a minute. I love Romania. Unfortunately, I'm given absolutely zero opportunities to make anything happen on my incredible table, apart from winning a few very small pots that I won't bore you with. And then I'm sadly moved to the other end of the casino away from all of my whale friends. Thankfully, the regs I've been moved to play with aren't exactly Stephen Chidwick, so I still fancy my chances to build a decent stack. In our first hand of note, I'm on the button with 9-8 of diamonds. The hijack opens to 800 and the cutoff calls. I call the big blind calls as well. We're off to a flop of queen 10 3 with two spades, which isn't exactly thrilling. So when it checks to me, I knuckle behind to unveil the either very good or spectacularly bad Jack of Hearts turn. When it checks to me again, I'm led to believe it's probably pretty good. So I stab with 2500 into 3800. Only the big blind calls, and while I wasn't sure if the turn was a good card, I can be pretty damn sure that the king of spades isn't what I wanted to see on the river. My opponent donks for 4k, and we begrudgingly let it go rather quickly. Annoying. I'm starting to feel pretty impatient as I hover around the 100 big blind mark, having not won a pot for a few hours. Two sixes seem like a decent candidate to get things going, so I open it up to 1,000 at 200, 400 under the gun. The cutoff calls before the button makes a pretty small squeeze to 3,500. Reasonable price, I reckon, especially when I expect the cutoff to come along as well pretty often. But unfortunately, this time he finds a reason to let it go. The flop is queen 7-3 with two diamonds and I am thoroughly whelmed. Not awful and I'll have to do some clinging on here versus aggression. That's exactly what we see as I check and the button fires out 4,000. I briefly consider a raise before flicking in a call and the turn brings the eight of diamonds. Seems like a pretty decent opportunity to get frisky and try to win a pot. So I pull out the old 40%-ish donk, 7,500 into 17,500 and the button lets it go. It's just nice to win one. Not the most interesting hand up next, but it had to go in for some classic table chat. After the undergun player limps, I peek down at 10 9 of spades, undergun plus one. I'm looking for any chance to get involved in this definitely qualifies, so I bump it up to 3,000 at 400, 800. The low jack cold calls the 3,000, the undergun player calls as well, and we are off to a flop of king jack three with two spades. Half decent, I'd say, so when the undergun player checks, I bet 4k. We get two quick folds before the remaining Sherlock Holmes starts piping up. Uh, happy. It's king. It's queen. <laughs> Well, uh, these are hands I could have, yes. They're not all of them, though. If you list everything, then you eventually you'll get it. You uh, were, was happy when I called. That's why I uh, was I? I would rather you had folded than called. Over the course of this main event, there's probably four hands I'd like to have back and do anything other than what I actually did. This is most definitely the first of those hands and maybe the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in a main event as soft as this. I start out okay. Opening to 2k under the gun with pocket fives. The low jack flicks in a call, as does the button, and we're off to a flop, which is 10 10 7 rainbow. I convince myself that a C bet seems reasonable, which I think it is, and just the button wants to see a turn, which is the four of hearts. I check as I think I have to, and the button gives me a great opportunity to relinquish my hand, betting 6600. Obviously, I don't take this opportunity and call, thinking there's maybe some overcard floats hanging about or some 8 9 in there, and that you might choose to raise the flop with a 10 a decent chunk of the time at least. Not the worst reasoning, but I am about to take this to the next level. My opponent slides out a bet of 15,300, and I start to get some very bad ideas. What if this geezer just has like Queen Jack, King Jack, 9-8, maybe we can find a way to win this one? Surely he would raise a 10 on the flop and not bet a 7 on the turn? 
After some thought, I convinced myself to go for it. I don't need to raise too big. Just a click to fold out high cards better than mine should do it. I'm a genius, I tell myself, and click it in his eye. No snap fold. Oh dear. Anything I could hope to fold out would surely have to snap fold, so I just sit there waiting for my inevitable demise. And after an age, he flicks in a call, and I announce my hand. Five high. <laughs> okay, nice hand. Five high can't beat Top Boat on this occasion, and I don't even know what to tell you. Maybe just a reminder for me and you guys at home, no one ever fucking bluffs. So don't do dumb shit like this. Very shortly afterwards, there's an incredibly tilting hand I want to quickly show you. An MVP opens the hijack to 2k, the cutoff calls, and I call with Jack 10 of clubs in the small blind. The flop is something I don't even remember, but I can tell you I was nowhere fucking near it. Very much like the unknown turn, and I'm ready to fold to any bet. The bet comes, MVP bet small, the cutoff folds pretty quickly, and as I'm getting ready to let it go, the the MVP tosses his cards into the muck for getting on behind. As you can clearly see, they touch the muck pile, albeit they are retrievable. The dealer rules that they didn't touch the muck when I know they did, and I have a split second to decide whether I should call the floor on the poor geezer and win the pot. I decide against it because I didn't think it would look great and I had no interest in this pot at all anyway, but it was seemingly the only way I was going to win a pot, so the thought did cross my mind. Anyway, on to the next one. With my tail firmly where it belongs, between my legs, I look down at a couple of jacks in the cutoff and I'm ready to take my leave in day 1B. We get it in against Ace King and get flopped deadly thin and a couple of super bricks finish us off. GG for bullet one, but we go again. We're straight into the mix in the day 1D turbo and looking to pick up some early heat. We've joined a few levels in and obviously the structure is a lot quicker, which is not my forte. But then again, what is? So a bit of luck is in order. We're kicking things off with my hand of demise in day 1B, pocket jacks. I open things up to 800, the hijack calls, and then the button jams his last 9,000. I obviously call before the hijack gets out of the way, and we're in front of the two nines of the button. A very safe ace, king, ten flop before a queen turn all but finishes things off, and a brick six river does the rest. Decent start. Very shortly afterwards, I'm dealt queens on the button, and I'm starting to enjoy this turbo malarkey. The low jack opens to 7,000 at 200, 300. The hijack calls, and I bump things up to 3,200. Both players come along, and we go to a flop of jack, seven deuce rainbow very reasonable so when both players check to me i fire out about a half pot bet of 4900 into 10400 only the hijack calls this time and the turn is again very favorable the four of hearts the hijack checks and i ask them how much they have which produces some rather hilarious results can i see your stack please oh i'm putting it in the middle now obviously when she does this she really doesn't want to see a bet and if i had a hand that needed less protection i'd probably check but with 15k back and 20k in the pot i don't see any other choices here and go for the jam just in case my read on the situation is wrong she lets it go very reluctantly but we're adding more chips to our ever flourishing stack i'm really feeling it now as i look down at king eight of diamonds from the low jack and open it up to 800 the button makes it 2500 which curves my enthusiasm before a big blind cold call from last hand's hilarity perks me up again I've got an awful hand for this spot, but I decide it's worth a go, so I flick in 2500 and we're off to a flop of Ace King 9 Rainbow with one diamond. I'm pretty confident check folding this hand to any meaningfully sized bet, but we check through to a ray of hope in the form of three of diamonds, giving me a backdoor flush draw. We check through once again before the nine of diamonds completes my flush and gives me what is surely an unbeatable hand given the action. We get the lovely news of a bet from the big blind for 5,000 and I raise just enough to put her all in for 16,300. The button folds and after a very short deliberation, she flicks in the rest of her stack. I announce nuts, which of course I don't have because the board is paired and I didn't even realize. But against the A7 off that cold calls a three bet and bet calls this river, it might as well be. They even proudly displayed it at showdown thinking it was good. Class. We're now at the heady highest of 90k and looking to build further. A very similar hand up next as we open king seven of diamonds to 800 before we see a three bet to 2500 and two cold calls. As with the last hand, some pretty bad reverse implied odds here, but the price seems too good, so we come along. This time it's ace, ace 10 with two diamonds and it checks the razor who prods out 500 and everyone calls. I complete my flush again, this time on the turn with the nine of diamonds, but I'm not feeling so hot about this one. We check it over again, but this time the aggressor bet's 5000 and I'm really not so much of a fan. Obviously can't fold, hate the idea of raising, so we call again after another call in front of us. The river is the king of hearts, which provides me with even more opportunities to lose, and when it checks over again, they go for a measly bet of 8k. I might not win, but I can't fold. And we're absolutely right as our opponent flopped us dead with ace-10 and we got what we probably deserved over the course of those last two escapades. Still looking healthy though and our table is absolutely class, so I'm feeling good. ace King up next as the under the gun player opens up to 1200, the low jack three bets to 2600 and I repop the button to 6500. Just the low jack comes along and the flop is a thoroughly acceptable ace-5-4 rainbow. With about 15k in the middle, I go for a small c bet of 4700 and they call. The turn is the eight of clubs, which brings a backdoor flush draw and completes some straights, but I still think we're mostly in betting territory here. They check, I fire 16k, and I'm not overly displeased to take it down. Back up to 80k. 
As I mentioned earlier, there's four hands from this main event that I'd love to have back if I could, and I'd like to forget about them as soon as possible. This, however, is not one of them. Our first aces of the main event comes on the hijack and we open it up at 300, 600 to 1400. My giddy excitement is soon quelled as literally everyone left to act flicks in the core and now I barely want to be involved. With five players to the flop, it's going to be extremely tough to navigate a lot of boards, but there is one board that I can tell you that isn't so testing and that board is a seven deuce rainbow. I throw out a desperate looking bet of 1600 to see what whoppers I can catch on my very large hook. The cutoff comes along and then to my utter disbelief and sheer joy the small blind wants to come at me with the 5k raise i can barely contain myself and on this board texture it's just so unbelievably unlikely that they're bluffing and they probably have at least a seven for top two every fiber of my being wants to three bet this flop but i just can't fucking bring myself to do it as we have this almost completely on lock and maybe the cutoff will throw in an almost certainly dead 5k not to mention i'm pretty much getting the lot off the other geezer every time anyway if my intuitions are correct the turn is a relatively safe three of spades and although 5-4 suited gets there i don't think that's all that likely at all and i'm still very pleased when they bet 8k on the turn i'm still sure i'm facing a set but decide to just call again and then jam over a river bet although i think the flop calls really reasonable i definitely think i should click this turn back if the river is a four straight completing spade or something i just look like a right dick not stacking a set here but alas we just call the river is the king of hearts which is an ultra brick never punished and my opponent absolutely rips the tits off it for 65k into 35k which is pretty reasonable to be honest and i fist pump snap him off with top set and now shock he's got a set of sevens I'd go as far as to describe this flop as reasonable and above par. And now we're up to a whopping 150k. Now we're thinking about a big healthy stack for day two. Up next, a nice fella from the UK opens the button to 1800 and I peel pocket fours on the small blind. Big blind gets out of the way and we go to a flop of queen jack three rainbow, which I check. The button bets 1800 and I think this is probably really close, likely a fold, but I do call this time and get completely fucking rewarded yet again with an offsuit four on the turn. What a life. I check button bets 4,500 and with about 40 to 50k left in his stack, I decide that it's time to go for the check race to set up stacks. It looks obscenely strong, but I also think it's a decent spot to apply some pressure. So I definitely think it's best. I make it 15,300 and the button is thoroughly displeased. So displeased that it would be pretty ridiculous for him to continue at this point. He does end up folding queen 10, which seems fair. And we take down another one. Now, while this next hand isn't one of the ones I desperately want to take back, I think it's pretty poorly played. I open ace five of diamonds to 2,500 under the gun at 600 1200 and a half decent romanian reg flats the button and the big blind comes along as well the flop is queen seven six with two diamonds the big blind checks and i decide to range check with two set completing cards out there the button can obviously have a lot of queen x that flats the button so i don't think it's a good enough board for us to be betting loads here the button bets 4500 and only i call the five of clubs peels off on the turn, which gives us some extra hope. So when I check and the button fires out 12,000, I don't think there's too much to do here other than just call again. So I do. Given how I've been running in this turbo, it's hardly surprising to see the 10 of diamonds reel off on the river, giving me the Tony Stonems. I think this is a pretty clear donking spot, especially in practice. But for some reason, I snap check, which is obviously very bad. Even if I had thought about it a little bit and landed on a check, I wouldn't mind it so much. But the snap check is just tilting. They rapidly check back as they're going to do obscenely often. And I beat King Queen at showdown definitely should have gotten more from this one in probably an even better example of the sheer heater i'm experiencing here i managed to win four way on the river on ace nine eight jack deuce with four diamonds with ace king of hearts for just top pair no one has a diamond no one could be asked to bluff and we add some more chips to the tower lovely stuff in probably the only tilting part of the day right at the end as bag for day two are being assembled in the background i look down at aces under the gun on my new table for probably the first time today everyone instantly folds and i have to settle for the blinds and antes obviously at this stage of the day that's pretty common but i needed to find something to moan about and that's a wrap for day 1c we're bagging 200k and 100 big blinds for day two which is definitely a comfortable spot for me to find myself in are we in danger of making a deep run we'll be back tomorrow to find out Morning guys, just fueled up at this insane pizza place here. 4.9 on Google deserves every fucking star. And it is, I didn't get to speak yesterday after I'd finished my, my day one because it was like 3.30 in the morning and I just didn't have it in me guys. So I went to bed instead. And now I'm on my walk, lovely 10 minute pleasant walk, 17 degrees today. And we're on the way to play day fucking two baby of the Bucharest main event. 560 euros, we did day one C. <laughs> I did the most ridiculous bluff. I was like, oh, everyone was like, look, all you gotta do is wait for hands. And I decided to click min raise somewhere on a double paired board with five high <laughs> on the river to try and make them fold like King Eye. I'm sure you've already seen it. And it was complete nonsense, but that's all in the past now. Then we sat down and played obviously 1D. I was thought I was gonna get, get some food. I was starving. 
I was like, oh, I'm out, guys. And then they were like, oh, do you want to play again? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's flick it in. So I played the turbo. Yeah, and it went super well. Like I sat down, won a few chips and a few interesting pots, lost a couple back in a flush against boat situation. And then, yeah, from there, I was like, oh God, that sun's bright, isn't it? From there, it was like pretty smooth sailing. I, I had aces, I had aces against sevens, obviously on A7 deuce, A7 deuce rainbow, whoopsie. And then, yeah like made a few hands, like it was just going pretty well. So today we've got day two. I think there's about 200 people left. I've got 205K. I think we're going back to big blind 2K. I said yesterday that it was 2,500 big blind, but I think it's 2K. So I think we've got a hundred big blinds, which is exactly where I want to fucking be, baby. And hopefully we can get on the feature as well. Let's go and find some more fucking chips and one deep run for the boys one time. Let's go. As you can tell, I was feeling pretty confident about this day two, more so than any of the other two day twos I've made in the past three years. This field is super soft and I've got chips to play with and I'm well rested, fed and watered. My enthusiasm for the entire day though lasts a grand total of about 45 seconds as a max late reg 50k stack bangs it in over a Wales limp for 2k, I call with queens and get the bad news in the fashion that we're all accustomed to. Good luck. All my heat from day one has evaporated in an instant and I'm already sulking in my chair. Standard. The perceptive among you may remember that there are still three hands on the list I'd like to take back and here we go with the second of them. I open the cutoff to 4k and a monster whale in the big blind string three bets to 7500. He's got about a starting stack of 50k and I don't see how I can do anything but call and see what happens. Remember this guy is an MVP, a total beluga. The flop is 869 rainbow and he bets a measly 3500, pretty much forcing me to float I think. And when he checks the tenor hearts turn I can already feel myself twitching. Don't fucking bluff the mega whale, don't fucking bluff the mega whale. And then I reach for 10,500 and slide it into the middle. He pretty quickly calls and the river breaks off in the form of an offsuit four. He checks after about an hour because he doesn't even realize it's on him. My mind is telling me no, but my body, my body is telling me yes. Without engaging my brain, I jam for 29,000, about two thirds pot. He takes about 10 seconds, realizes he doesn't even know how to read a board and then calls with aces. What the fuck am I doing? I'm now seriously pissed off, originally with the dealer, but now with myself. Jesus Christ, what a shit show. As I am in clearly no mood to play winning poker, I need some help from the deck and I'm hoping we might have it here in the form of pocket jacks. I open under the gun to 5,000 at 1,000, 2,500 and the low jack and big blind call. Both absolute humpback whales. The flop is to my absolute rescue. Ace jack three with two diamonds. Big blind checks and I start out with 5k and the low jack whale clicks it to 10k which warms my cold dead heart. After big blind whale flops out of the way, I decide this is a slam dunk three bet against this geezer and make it 25k to go. He calls pretty quickly and I don't think he would ever fold any hands that play this way here. And the turn is the absolutely dead nine of hearts. I jam for 55k and he snaps it off with ace 10 off because Romania and he's dead as a doorknob cooler. The two of hearts on the river secures my double and I'm left wondering why the fuck I would ever bother bluffing in this field. I'll save you some time. There's no answer there. I've resurrected my stack to about 150k and I need to regain my composure and start anew. No silly mistakes now. No bluffs, no rotten cooldowns for any reason at all. And that brings us nicely on to the third hand of the tournament that I wish I could have back. Two Megalodons limp under the gun before a Spanish fella who was on my feature table in Madrid and did some wild shit with King Jack off, if you remember, raises to 7,500. I look down at Jack's, which is a pretty good spot against this geezer in this situation, and I three bet to 17,500. The whales swim off and the Spanish fella calls a 17,5. The flop is Queen 10 3 Rainbow and Mr. Gonzalez checks. While it's not my absolute favorite board, it certainly favors me, and I decide to bet 15k, which he quickly calls. The turn is the 10 of spades, which I am really not huge on, and after Gonzo checks, I elect to do the only thing I can do, which is check it back. The river is the third 10 in the form of the 10 of diamonds, and Gonzo starts loading the gun. All I can think about is how much he was up to it in Madrid as he assembles 65k and puts it in the middle. Let's stop for a second though. Who in the living fuck is bluffing this spot? And with so many wrecks on my table, why would I ever call here? I can just call my King X if I want to, which I have plenty of by the way after I check back the turn on a 10 and fold everything else. But no, fucking no. I can't help myself. Here you go, Gonzo. Fancy an extra 65K for no fucking reason at all. No worries, chap, have it. Quads, shock. 
I make myself sick. So it's again time to go back to doing what is obviously going to be working incredibly well, and that is pilfering the whoppers for every cent. After a well in the hijack limps, this was in fact his only weapon, we check the big blind with 7-3 of spades and go to a flop, which is decent. 8-5-4 with a spade. I go for the lead for 5k and the well flicks in a core. Turns another very decent card, which is the 10 of spades, adding a flush draw to my potential. Check jamming could be decent against a reg, but I have fuck all fold equity in that line, so I just decide to bet myself to the tune of 13k, and the well brings out seemingly everyone's favourite sizing, the click raise. I'm only going to have 32k left if I call here a miss, but I just have too many outs to be asked about that. I have to call, and obviously the plan is to donk any card that gives me a straight or flush, and this geezer is just never going to be able to fold, is he? Let's be honest. And so it goes. The river is a juicy six of clubs. I donk jam my 32k. The whale isn't happy about it, but calls off the top two, and we are swinging back above 120k. If I didn't dust it all off everywhere, I'd be incredibly healthy. But as it is, I'm still battling for my life because I'm an idiot. I'm continually reminding myself not to do anything stupid. An opening to 10k at 2,500, 5,000 with 8, 7 of hearts from the low jack seems to fall under that umbrella just about. The cutoff, button, and big blind all call, and the flop is a very reasonable jack 9, 6 with a heart. It checks through on the flop, and the turn is a 3 of hearts, giving me both a straight and a flush draw once more. The big blind elects to come out swinging with 18k on the turn, and again, I think fold equity just doesn't exist exist here too often when someone bets into three players. I just call hoping to get there and the other players get themselves out of the way. The river is an almost too sexual five of spades, but I'm left devastated when my customer checks it over to me. I can't think of anything to do other than to jam here, so that's what I do. We get a little sweat and I feel like I might be getting a call, but alas, our hope isn't in vain and the big blind mucks it and we have to settle for whatever's in the pot. It's all good though, right? I'm just going to pay solid, nothing stupid, pick my spots. Yep, let's go. And so, of course, we come on to the last episode of What the Fuck Were You Doing? What the fuck were you doing? We have 190k at 3,000, 6,000, and I limp Queen 10 off in the small blind versus a big old whopper. This guy has been doing it off to some geezer on his left and looked a bit steamy, so I'm bearing that in mind as we see a flop of King, Queen, 5, all hearts. I check and Mr. Well pops out 8k, which I obviously have to call. The turn looks okay, it's the King of Diamonds and I check again. This time I met with another bet, this time chunkier of course, and it's 22,000 to go. I think I just have to call again, but what do I know? Maybe we could even make a tight fold here. I do call though, and the rivet is the eight of clubs, pretty much a total brick. I check and Whaley McWhalerson bets 55,000. Fuck's sake. Again, I'm convincing myself that this guy's just tilting, could have any random garbage and just wants to win a pot for once. Against that, my hand can win and I'd be above 300k. I don't need to win all that often, but do I really win? I first use a very pretty time bank card and then fucking call it off like a donkey because I can never fold a river and fucking yet again get shown the goods. This time, king three off. I've had so many chances to build a stack, it's completely criminal how I've managed to let this slide as I fall well below 100k and contemplate my existence. The results of said contemplation were not pretty. As I start to wonder how many more times my horrific decisions can be bailed out, I'm dealt ace queen of clubs on the bottom with only 5 big blinds remaining. Dream spot. I jam, the small blind rejams which I'm sure can only be bad news, but maybe I'm just a doomer. I've got ace queen suited for 5 big blinds for fuck's sake. Nope, kings. The most unhelpful board of all time is laid before me, and perhaps the most deserving bus of all time follows. 72nd place for piss all. 50 places were paid, and I apparently had no desire to reach that threshold. At the very least, I hope I can learn something from this, but I can just see it now, in the very next tournament, flicking in a call for most of my stack with a speculative bluff catcher in an under bluff spot, and berating myself all over again. Who would have it any other way? Morning guys, look, I don't think that was my best performance. There's four hands that are really sticking in my head as just stupid, dumb, fucking idiotic things. Trying to bluff Romanians, trying to call people down as if anyone's ever fucking bluffing. It feels a bit stupid how I've bust this. I really feel like I should have made the money. My table was unbelievable. Tried to bluff an MVP with an under pair on a four straight, thinking maybe he wouldn't want to go home yet. We're gonna to go today and do some commentary, but I just thought I would wrap up and say, my bad. <laughs> I don't think that that was the uh, the optimal performance I could have given, but I was super pissed off with that ace queen hand. I'm not gonna lie at the end. This, this mega whopper who I just called down in the previous hand by my spine. Just wakes up with kings in a small blind. I'm just like, okay, cool. So yeah, my last day in Bucharest today, commentary for like three hours, and then we're going out for some, I'm gonna go out for some food last night. But yeah, I'm signing off now. Next event will be UKPL Manchester. If you see a vlog, I've done okay or something stupid's happened or I've made an idiot of myself on the feature table. Other than that, Barcelona in May will be definitely a vlog. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Still searching for that first day to date live event cash. All the best. Cheers for watching.